It's Puff's World. It's Puff's World. Got out of work early today. Came to ride Tokolis. I'm here at the 356 Drive parking lot. Lots are empty. Means no one's here. It's gonna be a good day. I'm gonna get changed real quick and we're gonna head out of here. So we're here in Fall City, Washington. Roughly 27 miles away from Seattle. We're here on the Snoqualmie Valley Trail. From here, we got a short ride up the Powerline Road. And I'm gonna be taking you guys down Goose Chase, which is a black diamond. Toko Mountain is made up of two different areas. We got Toko East and Toko West. So Toko West is gonna be more of your cross country style mountain biking. Super fun, but today we're going to Toko East. It's your more downhill oriented uh, trails. A little more risk factor. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys what a, what a PNW Black Diamond looks like. If you do find yourself here, you're gonna get to a Y at this big power line. And if you go right, you're gonna end up on the Flotron climb, way easier climb. But if you go left, you're gonna do power line climb. And there's actually a second power line just past this one. It's a bitch of a climb, but it's short. It's gonna get us right to where we wanna be. So uh, let's get chugging along. You don't wanna see this stuff, it ain't interesting. Next stop, downhill. Upper Goose Chase is rated as a blue trail, but really it's not worth the ride. It's a really boring traverse, and so I'm not gonna take you through this. Next stop, Goose Chase. We drop into where most people assume Goose Chase starts, at the fire room. This isn't your typical, well-maintained downhill trail. Steep sections are harder, with roots and ruts that make breaking near impossible. While everything is rollable, it requires commitment. There's no big jumps, but there's lots of small bumps and drops that'll lead you into small corridors of rutted Burmy jankiness. This log drop is rollable, but it's better suited to hit it as a drop with a little bit of speed. Another thing I forgot to mention is you need to buy a permit to ride here from the Campbell Global Company. I've known a lot of people that have ridden here without a permit, I don't know what happens if you, if you get caught without one. I just, I get one. It's not worth the hassle. I don't want to find out. The few flat traverses are the place to get your bearings and get ready for the next steep sections. This spot in particular is the steepest riding at Tokyo riding over insane ruts and exposed roots. We make our way on a fast and flowy traverse through an exposed area from logging of the mountain. This is the spot to open up and go as fast as you're willing to push it. Winding through the trees, we come out to the intimidating but easy stump jump. We come to a section with tight, ruddy berms that end with drops in some places.
towards the bottom, you can really open up and catch some speed. This trail is an absolute must for every PNW or looking to level up their game. Just don't be an idiot like me. Bring a friend along to enjoy the radness with you. And that's how it's done. We made it out of there alive. All right, so for today's beer feature, out of Everett, Washington, is Scuttlebutt Breweries, Living Daylight Hazy IPA. Quite possibly the best name in the game. Let's give it a go. Nice and citrusy. Some really good bitterness. Really like this one. You get the chance, every Washington scuttle butt. Get that scuttle butt. I got a lot more videos planned here at Toko Lease in the future. So if I didn't get to your favorite trail today, don't fret, I'll get to it next time. If you enjoyed riding with me today, don't forget to hit subscribe and smash the like button putting videos out every Wednesday. So hit the notification bell to be notified of my latest videos. And uh, thanks for riding with me today. See you next time. Peace. Man, looks like we've got a full lot. What a difference a couple hours make.